I wanted to do a little review or a little um, synopsis or a little um, highlight into um, the first week of A Course in Miracles. All right, so let's get started. So in A Course in Miracles, um, there are three, three main books. There is the text, there is the workbook for students, and then there is the manual for teachers, three main texts. There's a couple of other ones, right? But these are the three main ones. The beginning of the year is the perfect time to begin to do the lessons in the workbook for students. There are 365 lessons in the workbook for students. And so obviously it's a whole year. It's a long process. As I always teach my students, it is about the turtle theory. The turtle, the tortoise, always wins the race. This work does this. Because what the workbook of A Course in Miracles is doing, it's attempting a paradigm shift in your life. And if you know what a paradigm shift is, a paradigm shift is something that comes when there is a tipping point, right? If you ever read the book, um, The Tipping Point from Malcolm Gladwell, amazing book. There is a tipping point in the thought, the tipping point in the mind, where suddenly things start to go, oh my God, you see it completely differently correct? So a paradigm shift is something that it can, a paradigm shift can happen from a traumatic event. That's true. But this is a gentle, easy way to have a complete paradigm shift. And that paradigm shift happens because in the course, what he does is he helps us to let go, let go, let go of the faults, let go of the faults. As the introduction to the whole Course in Miracles says, the meaning of love cannot be taught, but we can be taught to start to begin to remove the blocks to the presence of love, right? Love is all there is. Love is the truth. And we don't see it. We see it sometimes but we don't live from it, right? Instead, we live from our controlling nature. We live from our nature that needs to have a certain thing to be a certain way. We live from the nature that has to have a goal in order to get something. Love, spirit, truth does not work like that. So this paradigm shift is just beautiful. So today we're gonna to talk uh, just a little bit about the first um, week of A Course in Miracles, okay? All right, cool. All right, so here's a little bit of the introduction. We're gonna go through some of the lessons quickly. So here we go. Oh my gosh, we have to hear it. Okay, so. The whole idea of A Course in Miracles, I'm gonna read a little bit of this, is, says, says this. The workbook makes the goal of the whole course possible. So by doing these lessons, it makes this theory into practice. It creates a practice for you, a practice for you, a practice for you, right? So the purpose of the workbook is to train your mind in a systemic way, systematic, sorry, systematic way to a different perception of everyone and everything in your world. I'm gonna say that again, this is from the introduction. The purpose of the workbook is to train your mind in a systemic, I don't want to say systemic, systematic way to a different perception of everyone and everything in the world. It also changes your perception of what? You, of you. So that's what it's doing. We're not going to read the whole thing, So, but we're going to go through the first seven le lessons. So, but I, I want to say this. This is another another thing from the course, I mean, from the introduction. Some of the ideas of this workbook present, the idea of the workbook presents, you will find hard to believe. And others may seem to be quite startling. 
This does not matter. You're only asked to apply the ideas as you are directed to do. Remember only this. You need not believe the ideas. You need not accept them. And you need not even welcome them. Some of them you may actively resist. So he's laying it right out there before you get to the lessons. Some of the things in in all these 365 lessons, you are going to go, I don't believe that. Or that's stupid. Or I don't know. He's just saying you don't have to believe it. And you may even actively resist it. Like, ah, it's not me. I don't like that thing. I don't want to do that thing. I don't want to accept that thing. But he's saying, here's the brutal honesty part. Just do them. He says, it doesn't matter if you believe that. You're merely asked to apply the ideas as you're directed to. When you're learning new belief systems, when you're learning something new, it doesn't always feel good. It doesn't, right? So some of these you're going to be like, what the hell? Why am I doing this? I don't believe that to be true, blah, 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 blah. But he's just like, take a moment and just do it anyway. Just do it anyway. It's kind of like feel the fear and do it anyway, right? So the first lesson. Nothing I see in this room, on this street, from this window, in this place, means anything. That's the first lesson. Nothing I see, I'm just going to condense it, means anything. Nothing means anything. This hand doesn't mean anything. That record player doesn't mean anything. This shirt doesn't mean anything. That desk doesn't mean anything. That ceiling doesn't mean anything. That light doesn't mean anything. You're just asked to look around and just do that. This doesn't mean anything. This doesn't mean anything. This is this is the beginning and it's huge. The first week of A Course in Miracles, if you just do the seven lessons, I'm not advocating this at all, at all. But I will say, if you just do the first seven lessons, you are gonna be far beyond what you, if you apply them, you're going to be far beyond where you were before in your mind. Remember, this is spiritual mind training, right? So the first seven lessons. So the first one is this bottle doesn't mean anything. This hand doesn't mean anything. This cup doesn't mean anything. That's all you're asked to do. Doesn't mean anything, right? Then it goes on to the second lesson. Everything I have given, everything I see in this room from the street, from this window, in this place, all the meaning it has for me. See, this is all scaffolding, scaffolding. The first part of A Course in Miracles is meant to start to dismantle your thought system based on fear, right? The next part starts to rebuild it and help you to get in touch with the love that's already there, right? So lesson number two. I have given everything the meaning it has for me. So first of all, there's nothing means anything. Second of all, I've given all the meaning, right? This um, just this water bottle right here for me means hydration. It means it's helping me. I have this water bottle next to my bed at night and I drink it during the night. So it, I have a whole... First of all, it means going to sleep. It means my bed. It means hydration. It means it means if I don't drink this, watch this. It means if I don't drink this, then something's not good. They can mean that, right? Good. Let's take what I have right here. Uh, this Tinkerbell cup. I've given a meaning to this Tinkerbell cup. When I got the Tinkerbell cup, I was looking for a small Demitas cup because I got a new a new espresso maker, and da, da 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 and I couldn't find the right kind, and I happened to be at Housing Works, which is a great thrift store, and this was sitting there, and it was a dollar. And I was like, well, there's my Demitas cup. It's right there, because I love I love um, um, <laughs> Tinkerbell. <laughs> See, I, to other people, people will have no association to this cup. It won't mean anything to you, right? So number two, powerful. I'm giving everything the meaning it has for me. Let's go to day number three. Day number three says, I do not understand anything that I see in this room, on the street, from the window, and in this place. I do not understand the cup. (laughs) I do not understand the water bottle. 
I do not understand this shirt. Right? Making meaning, creating meaning. This is big. See how he's systematically starting to strip you away from your projections. Your projections. Number four, these thoughts, these thoughts do not mean anything. They are all like the things I see in this room. This is huge. This is a huge one too. Because what do we do? We believe our thoughts. Everyone here believes their thoughts. It's been proven that 95%, that's, that's, that's just what I'm saying. It's, it's like 90 something percent of your thoughts don't mean anything. And we believe them anyway. We believe them anyway. So he's, a, he's, he's goes from outer to inner. Outer, outer to inner. Your thought doesn't mean anything. This thought, and then you're meant to say it, this thought about my mother doesn't mean anything. It's like the things I see on the street or in the room. This thought about my future doesn't mean anything. It's like the things I see in the room and the bottle doesn't mean anything. This is where it gets kind of scary. Because you're going to have to start to face letting go of your idea. Take a deep breath. This is why I say that the first week of A Course in Miracles is mind-blowing, if you really get it. And this is work you consistently do, right? Because you're always giving meaning to everything. You're always giving meaning to everything. So you consistently go, oh, I've given that meaning. I do it all the time. I've been doing this work for a long time. I've had quite a few spiritual awakenings, levels of spiritual awakening. And I still sometimes I'm like, why am I giving that that meaning? Oh, my gosh. Why am I giving them that meaning? Ridiculous. Right? So that's number four. These thoughts don't mean anything. Are you believing every thought that flies through your head? Number five introduces another, another really powerful, and you've heard this before, I think, many of the principles of A Course in Miracles have seeped their way into psychology. It's because these are psychological principles and they've seeped, them, seeped into the popular culture, right? So the next one, the lesson five is, I am never upset for the reason I think. Really? So when you when you're you get angry at the guy that that cuts you off on this freeway, you're like you ass whatever it happens to be, you're not really angry at the guy that cut you off, because well we won't go into it because it's very anyway. Um, you might be angry because your husband said something or didn't say something to you in the morning. And you're still holding that. And this is the perfect opportunity to be like, ah, right? So you're never upset for the reason you think you are, right? And he introduces something in this lesson that's really important. He says, there are no small upsets. They're all equally disturbing to my peace. Remember, peace is the goal of A Course in Miracles. So any form of upset, if it's worry, if it's anxiety, if it's judgment, if it's anger, whatever it happens to be, are all forms that are keeping you away from the peace that you're really looking for. So you're never, ever upset for the reason you think. Number six, I'm upset because I see something that is not there. Hmm. Let's take the guy that cut you off on the freeway. Guy, gal, whatever. So you're like, God, damn, uh, shouldn't have cut me off. Whatever, road rage. And so I'm not upset because I, I see something that's not there. What you 
subconsciously might be be um, really upset is that your husband or your wife or your partner is has been ignoring you. And so this person ignored you and you suddenly project all your stuff onto that person. It's very, very typical projection in 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 psychology 101. Right. But you have to understand psychology 101 to get it to be like, oh, my God, I'm not really. A, I don't really, it doesn't even matter if somebody cut me off. What I'm really seeing, I'm seeing the reflection that my lover is ignoring me. You see something that's not there. And then you go, oh, they're out to get me. They're out to get me. People are out to get me. Oh, God, why do people always try to da 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 And they're selfish. And, and I'm so magnanimous. And they're selfish. And you see, you're upset because you see something that's not there. The truth may be that this person that cut you off might have somebody that's very sick in the car that needs to get to make that turn to get to the hospital. That's not, it's not there. They're not going, okay, I hate that guy in that car, so I'm going to cut him off. <laughs> that can happen, but usually it's not true. But it could, there's a whole other story going on there, right? The last number six, from one to six is already a big leap. Let's go to seven. Number seven is my mind is preoccupied with past thoughts. This is so true. The example I just gave is really true because you would not be getting mad at the person that cut you off on the freeway if you weren't preoccupied with the past of how your partner has been ignoring you, right? Because that's the past. It's not the moment when you're on the freeway. It's not the past. I mean, that's the past. So your mind is preoccupied with past thoughts. This is huge. This is huge. You have to understand. And let me make a little connection to the beginning. Your past thoughts are creating the meaning that you're giving to the cup. My past is that I love Disney. In the moment, I do, but whatever, right? So your past is creating the meaning, which creates the story. And that story is either going to be empowering you or it's going to be disempowering you, right? All right, take a big deep breath. So that's week one. That's just week one. A lot of power in The Course of Miracles. A lot of power in The Course of Miracles. 